If you visit Money Control website and sort the mutual fund in large cap category in terms of AUM, that is asset under management, you will find that Axis Blue Chip Fund has the highest AUM of nearly 33,800 crore rupees, making it the largest active mutual fund in the large cap category. However, if you look at the performance of Axis Blue Chip Fund in last one year, it is ranked 32nd out of 33 mutual fund. And in last two years, it is ranked 29 out of 30 mutual fund making it one of the worst performing mutual fund in large cap category. And as per latest crystal rating, it has got only two star rating out of five. On top of this, excess mutual fund house has been in limelight recently due to some irregularities in the asset management company. All these negative developments have created big question mark in the mind of existing investors of excess blue chip fund. Hello everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Purse of Finance Academy. Over the last few years, Access Mutual Fund has been one of the favorite mutual fund house of every investor. Its mutual funds have outperformed other funds in the category as well as benchmarked by a huge margin in the past. And its outperformance is not only in large cap category but across categories like flexi cap, mid cap, small cap, etc. Especially its mutual fund in large cap category, that is Access Blue Chip Fund, has been an outperformer on a consistent basis in the past that resulted in investors pumping huge amount of money in Access Blue Chip Fund. As a result, Access Blue Chip became the number one mutual fund in large cap category in terms of AUM with the latest AUM of around 33,800 crore rupees. It clearly suggests that Access Blue Chip is a part of portfolio of many investors in the country. But of late, this mutual fund has been an underperformer. The underperformance is so bad that now it is ranked 32nd out of 33 mutual fund in last one year of performance and 29 out of 30 mutual fund in last two years of performance. So the big question here is, what is wrong with excess blue chip fund? Why is it underperforming? And the biggest question is, should you hold excess blue chip fund in your portfolio or exit? So I have done my research and tried to answer the questions. First, let's try to understand the reason for underperformance of excess mutual fund. And then we'll try to understand if you should exit from it or not. All right, let's get started. Before we look at the reason for underperformance, let us first try to analyze excess blue chip returns on year on year basis. So here is the comparative data comparing excess blue chip performance with SNP BSC 100 TRI, which is the benchmark, and the large cap category average return. Now, if you look at the period of 2017, the SNP BSC 100 generated a return of 33.27%, whereas Excess blue chip generated 39.81% return. So excess blue chip clearly outperformed the benchmark by a huge margin. And even the category average was 31.87%. So excess blue chip not even beaten the benchmark, it also beaten the category average. Then if you look at 2018 again, excess blue chip has generated a return of 8.01% against the benchmark return of 2.61%. So again in 2018, excess blue chip has beaten the benchmark as well as the category average by a huge margin. Same thing happened in 2019. Excess blue chip return was 19.97% against the S&P BSC 100 return of 10.92% and category average return of 11.56%. Then in 2020, the S&P BSC 100 return was 16.84% and category return was 15.19% whereas excess blue chip return was 21.19%. So consistently between 17 to 20, Excess blue chip has beaten both benchmark as well as the category average. However, in 2021, if you see, the S&P BSE 100 has generated 26.53% return and category average is 27.1, whereas excess blue chip returns are 22.11%. So in 2021, excess blue chip underperformed as compared to both benchmark as well as category average. Now, if you look at the quarterly performance in last quarter of June 22, the benchmark return were minus 9.33% and category average was minus 9.49% whereas the excess blue chip return were minus 12.58%. Clearly, excess blue chip has been an underperformer in June quarter and even in March quarter if you see, benchmark return was 0.78% whereas S&P excess blue chip return were minus 2.99%. So clearly, excess blue chip has been an outperformer between 17 till 20 but in last couple of years, it has been an underperformer. The reason for outperformance, especially during 2017 to 20, lies in the investment style of excess blue chip fund. Unlike other funds in the large cap category, excess blue chip followed growth oriented investment style. Now in large cap category, the options are limited. You have to invest minimum 80% of your money in top 100 companies. 
And if you analyze the portfolio of large cap companies, they would all have some common stocks like ICICI Bank, Reliance, Infosys, TCS, SDFC Bank, Asian Paint, etc. But what made Excess Blue Chip outperform was its bet on growth companies and willingness to pay a premium valuation for them. For example, there are two stocks that are part of Excess Blue Chip Top 5 Stock Portfolio, Bajaj Finance and Avenue Supermart. Both these stocks have outperformed crazily between 2017 to 20. Bajaj Finance jumped 250% during 2017 to 20 and Avenue Supermart jumped 200% during this period. And Excess Blue Chip had a high percentage holding in these stocks and that resulted in outperformance of Excess Blue Chip Fund. In one of the interviews, Excess Blue Chip Fund Manager Mr. Shreyas Devalkar mentioned that market has rewarded quality and growth style of investing post demonetization which is reflected in our performance. In fact, Excess Blue Chip still hold a high stake in both these stocks. Currently, it has 8.53% holding in Bajaj Finance and 7.13% holding in Avenue Supermart. There was a time last year when Bajaj Finance was number one stock in its portfolio with 10.5% holding and both these stocks were expensive in terms of valuation. For example, Bajaj Finance used to trade in the P range of 70 to 80 and Avenue Supermart PE was in the range of 101 to 130. That was super expensive valuation. And then what we saw is a huge correction in both these stocks. Avenue Supermart tanked nearly 45% from the highs of 5,900 to levels of 3,200. Although it is currently trading at levels of 3,800. And Bajaj Finance tanked 35% from highs of 8,000 to levels of 5,200. Currently it is at levels of 5,800. By the way, these are just a couple of examples to help you understand the growth oriented investment style of Excess Blue Chip Fund. So due to sharp correction in such growth stock, Excess Blue Chip Fund has underperformed. Another great comparison is the investment style of SDFC Mutual Fund that follows more of a value style investment. Its CIO Mr. Prashant Jain is very clear about his strategy of investing more towards value pick that also includes some of the top PSUs of the country like NTPC, Coal India, SBI etc. Now SDFC AMC is one of the top fund houses in the country but it has been an underperformer in the past. The reason is due to its value based investment style. SDFC mutual fund did not perform well for a really long time until the beginning of this year. Hence SDFC mutual funds were a big time underperformer in the past. But now the scenario has changed. While Nifty has fallen 10% year to date, Coal India is up 20% year to date, NTPC is up 12% year to date and SBI is up 3.5% year to date. No wonder SDFC top 100 fund has been the second best performing mutual fund year to date and in the last two years. It basically means that everything boils down to the investment style of fund manager. Until this year, growth investing outperformed value investing. In fact, I remember people saying that value investing is dead. But this year, value investing has outperformed growth investing by a big margin. A classic example is ITC that is up nearly 33% year to date when Nifty is down nearly 10%. And since excess mutual fund followed growth investing, it outperformed in the past. And SDFC mutual fund followed value based investing, it underperformed in the past. But now the scenario has completely reversed. I hope now you clearly understand the reason behind the outperformance and underperformance of excess blue chip fund. Now let us discuss what should be the investment approach in current scenario. Should you remain invested or exit from excess blue chip fund? Before we conclude if you should stay invested or exit from excess blue chip fund, I want to discuss a very common mistake people make while investing in mutual funds. And the mistake is simply investing based on past return. So retail investors would visit the website and sort the mutual fund in terms of highest return in last one to three years and would simply pick the fund with highest return. And if you are a mutual fund investor, just ask yourself, how did you invest? Then you just look at the past return because that's what majority of investor does. Also the fact that it is also very easy for mutual fund agents and all the experts to suggest mutual funds with top performance in the past. Since excess blue chip outperformed in the past, Every mutual fund distributor showed the great returns and suggested investing in this mutual fund. Now that excess blue chip fund is not performing, what should you do? Should you exit and start investing in SDFC fund since it is doing well now? But what is the guarantee that SDFC funds would continue to outperform? What if after 5 years you find that now SDFC funds are not doing well and some XYZ fund is outperforming? Would you switch to the new fund house again? Well, that would be a classic mistake. If you keep switching your funds, 
you will never be able to beat the benchmark. Forget about generating high returns, you will end up with very poor returns if you continue to switch based on the fund performance. So basically, the decision to select the right mutual fund should depend upon the investment style of that fund manager. You need to look at the portfolio of the mutual fund and understand the investment style. And then you should ask yourself whether you like value-based investing or growth-based investing. And accordingly, you need to select the fund and stick with it even during the rough time. Although it is not a cakewalk for a normal retail investor to identify the fund manager investment style. By the way, there are also other parameters like expense ratio, sharp ratio, standard deviation, etc. And you should always keep in mind to invest in funds with lower expense ratio. But the most important parameter is to look at the portfolio of the mutual fund and the fund manager details who is managing the portfolio. That would give you a clear picture about the mutual fund. But like I said, it is not a cakewalk. It is extremely difficult for normal retail investor to make the right judgment. And more importantly, what if the fund manager leaves the company? The new fund manager might have a completely different investment style. On top of that, it has been proven in the past that more than 50% active mutual funds struggle to even beat the benchmark in large cap category. That means there is 50% probability that the active mutual fund you selected in large cap category would not even beat the benchmark. Forget about generating high returns. Hence, if you are a new investor, then best option is to simply invest in a Nifty 50 based index fund so that you will at least get this returns similar to Nifty 50 index and would never have to think about switching the mutual fund. The problem is that investors look for thrill in stock market and mutual funds. They don't like boring investment and passive investment is very boring. On top of that, you know that passive funds can't be the benchmark. So there is no excitement. Hence, people avoid index fund. But that reminds me of one great quote. It says, if investing is entertaining, if you are having fun, you are probably not making any money. Good investing is boring. Now, if you are an existing investor in an excess blue chip fund, then you can continue to hold your investment if you believe in growth oriented investment style of this fund house. However, if you have more money to invest, it is better to invest in an index fund. As far as irregularity in excess fund house is concerned, it is really disappointing to know that few people in the company got engaged in front running where few fund managers invested in same stocks from their personal account before executing the orders from excess fund house. Basically to benefit from the rise in share price because when fund house invests hundreds of crores in a stock, it is expected to jump. Although that happened at individual level and not at corporate level, still it is disappointing. Such incident reminds us of the fact that it is very difficult to trust someone. In fact, you should never trust anyone blindly with your money, not even me. Today, there are many people suggesting stocks and mutual funds and giving free tips, but I have been saying this from day one. Do not trust anyone blindly. Learn how to invest your money and do your research before investing because the best investment you can do is investment in knowledge so that once you know the skill to manage money, you will not have to depend upon others. In case you want to learn more about active versus passive fund or how to do fundamental analysis of a company or money management in general, then you can explore my course. And there are multiple courses out there. You don't need to enroll only in my course. Just learn the art of money management in a structured manner. It could be from anywhere. So this is it for this video. I hope now you understand the reason for underperformance of Axis Blue Chip Fund. Well, it might happen that in the future, the growth investment style again pick up. But for now, this style has been badly beaten down that resulted in underperformance of Axis Blue Chip Fund. And like I said, the best way to invest in large cap category is via index fund. Just simply invest in a nifty 50 based index fund and you are sorted forever. I hope you'll find the video useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.